Welcome to the Clash podcast for the Latina International Art Festivals. We're going to be looking at what does the theme Clash mean to the artists that are involved in the festival, how the artwork responds to this theme and what has inspired it, as well as their motivation for taking part in the Latina Art Festival and their thoughts on what the future holds for this theme Clash. Firstly, We'll start off by asking Sarah Jane, the curator and one of the organisers of the Lacuna International Art Festival, um, about what does the theme clash mean to her. Thank you, um, and thank you for having me here to talk to you about um, the theme. So. As most people in the festivals will now know, um, our themes are nominated and chosen by our artist participants, and this year it was no different. The, the theme Clash was chosen by Elizabeth Kirschbaum, um, and so when it first became the theme, when the vote came in, um, just like everybody else that was taking part in the festivals, um, I had to really think about what this theme meant for me and um during the course of the planning of the festival that's that's changed a lot for me so let me explain about um some of the clashes that i i observe here in lanzarote um, and the thing that really moved me and that i ended up making artwork about was um the clash between immigrants arriving who are very small in boats, they're known as parents, um, and they're often 30 or 40 people crammed into a, a small boat, and it's a dangerous crop for them, quite a lot of lives are lost, um, and they don't necessarily get the help of the island, not necessarily from communities or locals, but there's quite a lot of hatred directed immigrants in so-called PAT groups, which if you're not familiar with the term, is a way that some British immigrants refer to themselves when in other countries. Um, so there is that happening. And at the same time, we have a very, very posh um, marina called Puerto Calero. And there we have shiny yachts that roll the elite with with you know billionaires um, and just that kind of total inequality um, and the response again from that same community is totally a totally different response um, and so that was my initial starting point and that was what the, the first piece of work was about um, but then of course the, the illegal invasion of Ukraine happened and um, this terrible war and I was actually in Kiev in September as a as an artist exhibiting there um, as part of the Intaglio Print Perennial, which is run by the White World Gallery there in Kiev. And so um, it was it was just really bizarre for me to be watching on the news places being bombed that a few months I had before I had been stood there, um, and I knew people now. You know, I had connections there. And these people were were suffering because of this conflict, and so that has become a really important element um, to me personally as well. I think speaking as a, a curator or the director of the festivals, the thing that I find most interesting is the range of perspectives that our artists bring um, and the different meanings that they have brought to this theme with their submissions this year. Fantastic, Sarah Jane. Thank you so much for sharing your insights on this. Um, and it shows there's a lot of thought that has gone into this theme of Flash and you've shared your outlook on it overall as well as the personal meaning. Um, now we'll be moving on to the artists that are involved in the Lacuna Art Festival. We'll start off with Armando. Um, Armando, if you can please introduce yourself. And tell us a little bit about your art background, please. 
So, uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, you and Sarah Jane for the opportunity to participate in this podcast and to be part of the Lacuna Festival. So, uh, I am Armando and I am uh, an artist uh, from Italy, from Naples, but based in Barcelona, even if I travel a little bit here and there and I travel during my mainly academic life. Uh, and my main background is in performing arts. So, uh, um, I am a playwright and uh, a writer. Uh, I teach theater and perform performing arts and performance. Uh, and uh, recently, I also started to explore a uh, different possibility of performing arts, working a lot with sound artists uh, in, for example, sound um, sound arts based content or pod play or micro or radio drama. Uh, and I'm very interested in uh, the possibility of, of, let's say, overpass the boundaries of my uh, previous, uh, let's say, art form, that is theater, uh, not only in the direction of the performance, but also uh, doing something that maybe can be considered theater, but not consumed in a conventional theatrical way. So I'm interested, for example, in digital, in the online, in the visual aspect of of the performance and so on. And in terms of writing, I'm very interested in the idea of adapting, in the idea of the, in working on the structures of the, of the thing. So in the structures of the play and how to manipulate the structures of, uh, of my writing. Uh, fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing about, um, your, um, brilliant, um, art background. What does, the theme clash mean to you specifically, Armando? Um, and Let, let's, yeah. let's say clash for me is a very interesting and important uh, word, but also an interesting and important uh, value and, uh, and, and content. So basically, because uh, I also from my personal perspective, I come from Italy and I come from a very specific city that is Naples, Napoli, that is in a way a city based on the idea of clash. Clash in any possible meaning, in any possible way. So I am talking about clash in the interaction and the interrelation between human beings. That also clash in the terms of the presence of really the high, high, high standard level, also the real richness, because Naples is a very rich city and at the same time a very poor city, uh, or the clash between, for example, the Christian and Catholic religion and the and the great paganism that we still have in the city. So clash is part of my soul as a human being, first of all, as an artist, and I and it's one of the words that I use to identify my uh, city, Naples. And even if I'm based now in Barcelona and I live in many different countries, in Poland, in Romania. And for example, Romania is another country with this idea of clash in, in Scotland, in Germany, and so on. Uh, the uh, idea uh, uh, of, of the idea of clashing is part of my, uh, of, of my identity and as well as Naples is part of my identity. As an, as an artist, as I said, I'm interested a lot in theater. And uh, also teaching theater, teaching playwriting, I like to uh, to work on the idea of clash and the idea of conflict because I think that this is one of the limits that we have, for example, in, uh, in performing arts is that we only select and use few uh, approach in uh, in storytelling or in theater and so on, and we teach few approaches. While it's very interesting to see uh, how interdisciplinary can be playwriting or can be theater. Uh, practice and one of the things that I use is the idea of the hedgehog dilemma, the one for example of Schopenhauer that is a little bit based on the idea of clashing of the conflict. So in in creating intimacy, human uh, human relation. Uh, uh, so uh, clash is is absolutely important in my in my practice and also for me as a human being. I would be not the person that I am without the idea of clash. Thank you very much. Um, and how does your artwork, if you can describe it for us, the particular artwork that you submitted to the Lacuna Art Festival, how does, what, how does that in particular specifically respond to this theme? Uh, the, the work that I submitted, uh, 
I was at the beginning. I was not uh, very sure if I wanted to submit this because it basically uh, I feel that it responded very well on the uh, to, to to the to the idea of clash, uh, but at the same time uh, is a reinvention of a very important for me a Russian character. So a character that belonged to my favorite, one of my favorite authors, it is Tolstoy, and to one of the first uh, play that I uh, that that I directed uh, in in Barcelona, that is the Forged Coupon, uh, adapted by uh, from Leo Tolstoy's The Forged Coupon. Uh, in that book, we in that play, in that original production, we decided to stop the uh, the performance, the production, in the moment when this character Stepan. Uh, is killing Maria, but with an idea of possible redemption. So, in a way, this idea of the redemption uh, is what conducted me to reflect upon this character, Stefan, and what happened after the murder, which is also the, the title of the, of, of the, of the artwork that I sent. It is a pod play, a micro pod play, uh, and it's basically an investigation uh, with uh, the voice of Raya Troitman that was also interpreting originally Stepan in the in the forged coupon on this character of Stepan that is moved by the idea of clash, is moved by the idea of redemption, is moved, and all the work of Tolstoy in that case is moved by the idea of, of the clashing between different instances, the corruption and the redemption. And in Stepan, this character that is the central character for me of the work, we can clearly see this idea of high and low, of instinct and spirituality that we uh, that we can that we can see. So, for, also for this reason, in the way how uh, I work in, uh, in on my Stepan with the voice of of Freya, was mixing to, together and clashing diff, the different version that Freya sent to me during the pandemic. So, it was done in a very let's say basic level because we were all locked in our uh, place and I didn't have the possibility to work specifically on on Stepan but I uh, I wanted to leave this very basic element making the voices of uh, of Raya clashing giving this idea of the, of the different intention and the instinct that are clashing in the character of Stepan looking for his redemption thank you very much for sharing that it seems like there's uh, lots and lots of layers um, and lots of avenues to explore uh, in your work, which really aligns with the theme of Clash. What made you take part in the Lacuna Art Festival? Well, I, I was already part with the, uh, at the Lacuna Festivals last year uh, in the online version with uh, another sound art uh, work uh, that was a really ma- a uh, micro micro pod play of one minute called Geschlossen, uh, written by me, translated by Raya Troitman, and co directed and sound edited and sound composed by Mirko Ettore D'Agostino, that was really the person behind that work. And I found the experience really uh, interesting, amazing. And what I really like of the Lacuna Festivals is the idea of community that the, um, that Simon and Sarajan wanted to create behind the festival. So to also a, a place where it's possible to uh, networking and to meet people, in that case it was uh, virtual due to, to the given circumstances, uh, and to share. So I like the idea of sharing that in a way is quite paradoxically because it's a little bit in contrast with the theme of clashing that we have, that we have this year, but it was a very nice experience, and I really wanted to uh, to do it again and to build on on that. Brilliant! Um, thank you very much. So, Armando, what do you think the future holds for this theme clash? Do you think it can be an ongoing theme, and if so, why? I I absolutely think that clash can be an ongoing theme, and also can be a theme that can be uh, expanded or read in using different layers because the idea of clash can also be uh, read as the idea of the conflict or the idea the concept for example of emergency but in a way also the idea of the relief that is in contrast with clashing can be something that we can 
that we can can uh, investigate in an artistic way. Uh, usually, I feel that uh, conflict and clashing is a little bit the base of uh, of art, and in this uh, uh, perspective, I'm very close to uh, Orson Welles in, uh, when he's talking to Joseph Cotton in The Third Man by Carol Reed, uh, saying, for example, the uh, what was happening in Italy before just the Renaissance, so in a period where there is this idea of conflict. So, uh, and in a way, uh, is uh, is also reflecting what uh, is happening uh, nowadays worldwide. Uh, unfortunately, I would say, but uh, I can be also quite cynical, and uh, I feel that it's very difficult to have solution in the short term. So. If the artist is reading and observing the reality, or the artist is also uh, helping to overpass or to change the reality, this is a reality that we have to to consider. Fantastic. Thank you very much for your very valuable insights linking it to literature, links to art, as well as really exploring um, the meaning of the theme clash how it relates to your fantastic artwork. Very grateful. Um, and we will continue the conversation on Thank Margot. You. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, I will now be asking Matthias if you can please introduce yourself as an artist and tell us a little bit about your art background. Hi, thank you all. Uh, very nice to be here. I have learned already something not quite new about Naples, just to say I love Naples, I have some friends there, and it's a really fantastic city, and it, there's a lot that clash there, really right. Okay, but now to me. Uh, yeah, I am, uh, I started as a writer, uh, to say, uh, I, I wrote short stories in the 80s, a lot of short stories and poems, and then I realized, okay, um, <clears throat> Many people told me that my stories, uh, they felt like being into a movie. Like there are many uh, uh, scenes where they are really uh, felt like they can touch them or they can feel them or something, something like this. And uh, at the same time, a friend of mine asked me to write something for a movie. And, and I realized suddenly this is it for me. And for the next years, I want to make movies. And I did a, a lot of short films then. <clears throat> and from this uh, stage, it was kind of strange because from short films, I came to visuals in general and also to performance. I, I also do a lot of performance. And uh, I'm really happy now. That I can mix all this together sometimes. You know, I'm, I'm running around with paintings in the streets or I'm building my own gallery into a gallery that do something else of the same thing that the gallery does and uh, make a performance out of it. And then the rest, it became, it becomes a film at the end and everything is mixing a lot. This, this is my way of working now. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Matthias, for um, okay. sharing um, your art background and about your different mm -hmm. experiences. Um, yeah. What does the theme clash mean to you? Yeah, this is a good question in a way because it can mean so many things. My first idea was that uh, I am really clashing all my life in a way because I think clash to clash is a way also of the artistic process. Also, what Armando said is really right. Uh, when I say, well, why do a performance? I always, or most times, I'm searching for something that is not working out, that is clashing, that is uh, something that is not fitting into something else. It can also be just the place that is not, that not fits or something that is really bothering me. And uh, this is, the way, for example, that I work with performance, and also all my life is like a contradiction. I, I, I have so many ideas. It's not, I'm not exaggerating. I have so many ideas every day, but I cannot realize it then. Only a few, just a few, because there, there is no money, or there is the people are not there. Everybody is saying, yeah, we have to make more money. We have to 
get more organized and the things like this. And uh, this is really a contradiction all my life. And I didn't realize it when I was young, but it was always like this. I want to realize this idea, that idea. And, uh, it was sometimes possible, sometimes impossible, but always with struggle. And this is a part of uh, my life as an artist, I think, to this clashing always with my surrounding and also loving the people that surround me. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's great. Thank you very much, Matthias. Um, what do you think the future holds for this theme clash? And do you think can it be an ongoing theme? If so, why? Yeah, okay. This is for me. Mm, I hope at least it won't be uh, every year the theme clash. <laughs> the theme clash is really nice, but uh, I hope that we have also more. Uh, Sometimes where where other subjects are more interesting, uh, I, I really the clash clash can be really interesting as a theme. But I think also it is really nice to have uh, another theme next year with all other possibilities that uh, are behind this future team also. So clash is really interesting. But I think uh, no, I would say really. Clearly, I would like to have another subject next. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for your thoughts, Matthias. Thank okay. you very much. Um, Thank you. So, I just want to turn this around now and ask, um, in terms of the theme being Clash, uh, uh, Amanda and Sarah, uh, you know, do you think that it can transform? So, when there is a Clash, if you're talking about it in the literal sense of the word, can it ever be sort of resolved through peace, through forgiveness? That's one interpretation. So can clash ever be transformed? What are your thoughts on this, uh, Sarah? And then we'll go to Amanda. Oh, oh, my chair is really squeaky. Sorry, I'll try not to move. Um, my thoughts on on clash being resolved is that i just want to, um, to clarify sorry sorry yeah my my question is in is it a theme being transformed so if we even look at clash in a literal sense of the word you know um or even just the essence of clash would just be that there's two opposing forces and then as a result you get clash right so do you think that it can ever transform the theme itself can clash ever be transformed an example i would would say would be a resolution to peace you know instead of having the two opposing forces so do you think there could ever be a transformation in clash yeah absolutely i do and in fact um this year for some of our submissions we had artists who responded in exactly that way who instead of responding and showing clash actually responded either with the moment before a clash where there's that sort of tension and you're it's almost happening but it's not and it might and it might not and um also with totally the opposite so instead of having any sort of clash something that's actually yeah peaceful and calm and mindful and beautiful um and I love that. I absolutely love that when artists really get inside a theme and go beyond what you expect um, to receive. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Sarah. And lovely to hear about, you know, the different arrays of um, artworks submitted, the different pieces and how uh, it is interpreted, uh, the theme itself is interpreted by the artist. Armando, what are your thoughts on this? Um, do you think the theme Clash can trans be transformed? Absolutely, absolutely yes. And uh, also, for example, in in my uh, in my work, the one that I submitted, the idea of Clash is going into the idea of, of redemption, the idea of peace, of forgiveness. So, uh, in a way, uh, the the Clash can be transformed because, as I said, it's a very huge and broad concept that can be. Transformed and need to be transformed 
can be read and be interpreted in different ways. So uh, I totally agree that uh, we also have to, uh, we can also work on the moment of the clash. So uh, as also Sarah Jane said, before, during, and after. So there are a lot of possibilities in this, uh, from this point of view. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, Sarah Jane, I wanted to ask you, did you also um, come up with an artwork that is uh, based on this theme? And if you did, could you tell us a little bit more about it, please? Yeah, sure. Um, so I have a diptych in this year's festivals, and it is a picture of a wooden patera on the beach um, in one, and on the other it is a picture of a shiny yacht in the sea, and in the top corners there uh, are some very brown tanned um, sunbathers legs and arms holding a mobile phone, and out of this mobile phone is pouring um, comments, and these are comments that were screenshot directly from a Facebook group that is largely made up of um, British immigrants, and um, it is their responses to these two arrivals. Um, and I've switched the text. So the welcome that they gave to the Patera is actually on the yacht and, and vice versa. Um, and yes, that's the work that I have in the festivals this year. Um, an incredible piece of artwork, Sarah, um, you know, which is also having a meaningful impact on the current social issues. Um, so I wanted to ask, uh, Armando, what, what, in, in terms of, you know, in terms of the Lacuna Art Festival, uh, I think you mentioned you took part in a previous, uh, year as well. Can you tell us what the theme was and what artwork uh, you had submitted previously? The, the theme was distance that, uh, was very appropriate for the, uh, for the historical period that we were living last year. So the word was about distance and the word that I submitted together with my colleague Mirko Etre D'Agostino, also Italian but based in Barcelona, was a short, uh, really short, short pod play of one minute called Geschlossen, so uh, close, uh, that was also translated and performed by Raya Teutman, the same artist of this year. Uh, this year work and basically it, it was a very uh, weird uh, piece of art that we submitted because started by by chance uh, after a comment that I left on a page on Facebook and I noticed that that comment was almost a micro story and basically it was a, a, a comment that then was transformed in the, this micro story was investigating the idea or oh, what does it mean being close in all uh, uh, the pos in all the possible meaning, but in one minute? So the idea of getting close emotionally, but getting by being close like locked, uh, the distance that we created and did after that will pass that will will pass that after the lockdown. If we are still locked and closed, we are coming back to be closed again, uh, and uh, and. I have to say that I was very happy with the result that Mirko did have an amazing job. And that one minute play, uh, after the Lacuna festivals and also before the Lacuna festival, uh, let's say, went a little bit all around the, the world. So this year was in, a, in events in Hong Kong, uh, Poland, uh, now I think is Italy, uh, was in Romania. So, uh, I, I'm, I'm very happy, uh, with that and was, uh, it was also a very nice occasion to meet uh, a reality like the Lacuna Festivals in a moment that was not happy at all because we were in the middle of the pandemic. Um, that's amazing to hear about, um, you know, again, about the artwork that you submitted. Do you think there could be a link between the two themes? Do you think there could be a, possibly a link between clash and distance? 
And for me personally, the link could be that by creating, by having distance, you could transform or resolve a clash. Uh, but I would like to hear your thoughts on this, Amanda, and then Sarah. Um, do you think there is a link between clash and distance? I I would say uh, yes, there is. There was a link, and there is a link, also because distance, in a way, uh, is can also create a clash. So even if the more is the distance, now it will be very, very obvious in uh, what I'm saying. I feel that I'm talking like Paolo Coelho in this moment, but uh, I think that that there is a, that there is a link. And personally, for example, I felt that the piece of art of last year, this Geschlossen, is also the element of the uh, of the clashing inside. So, uh, but but uh, the idea of distance can also be the idea of patterns, the idea of pathways that can cross. We can cross our patterns, and maybe we can have clashing, we can have contradiction, we can have conflict. Maybe not. So, is as clash can be read in a very different way. So. That's an incredibly um, interesting uh, perspective, and thank you so much for uh, sharing that. Um, Sarah, what are your thoughts on this in terms of the links between distance and cash? I think that the links between the festival themes are um, pretty clear, actually, and I think that they are um, rooted in the times that they the, the themes get nominated. Um, I think that they're a reflection of what is happening in the world at the time. And the way that things tend to happen, very generally speaking, is there's like an action and then a reaction. Um, and I think that you see that in the themes of the festival. One sort of leads to another, um, or one is because of another. And as um, I've spoken about before the the festival themes are nominated and voted for by the artists. So this isn't a, an intention of mine or something that I particularly desire. It's just how I think the how I think it works out. Brilliant. Thank you very much. And it, it's really interesting to you know to observe how the artists respond to it, how seriously they take the theme. And in, in terms of the artwork that's produced in response to it, um, and again, that would make for a very intense, um, audience experience as well, because this is artwork with meaning, with a, a clear thought process behind it. Mateus, I would like to ask you, do you think the theme, um, clash can be transformed? And if it can be transformed, how? Yeah, interesting question. I have to think a little bit about it. I think uh, the clash is, is something that happens more or less in a moment. Okay, the moment can be also three years or ten years, like in a big never-ending war or something, but it's always a moment. And uh, as, I don't know if Amando said it now, but uh, I think it has really had to do with distance and uh, 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 or at least the absence of distance many times also because uh, like yeah the one village is hating the other because they are there on the other side of the river and they are almost doing the same thing like we but I don't like it how they do it you know <laughs> and uh, sometimes the distance uh, I just want to say it's a little bit different now my answer but I think it's really interesting. It has to do with distance or with the lack of distance to clash, to, to be in this moment, where there's maybe no other solution than aggression or conflict or whatever. Uh, but, uh, the transformation is maybe happening at the same time. We, we cannot stay in this, uh, in this clash. It's impossible. So, uh, even if everything is burned on a, uh, or destroyed on in some moment, there has to be uh, a moment after the clash. And yeah, maybe it's go it's going on forever like this. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of hope even in in the clash. I think in the moment of the clash, or shortly after the clash, uh, 
some solutions maybe uh, within the clash already. That there are the roots in, in the clash. They have the roots for the clash. Yeah. Thank you very much for, sh uh, for sharing your insights, uh, Matthias. Um, Molly will be joining us shortly. Um, in the interim, I wanted to ask if you'd like to share any personal examples and anecdotes of either witnessing clash in real life or experiencing that and, you know, and the impact that it had or, or perhaps resolving it in a sense. So, um, Amanda and Sarah and Mateus, so I would like to ask you all if there are any examples that you'd like to share. It could be, you know, a personal example, something that you've seen or witnessed. It could be, you know, a secondary example where you've heard uh, about, you know, a clash in real life and the impacts of it. Or it could just be a simple observation of global events and the clash that you see within them. Um, we'll start off with you, Sarah J. Thanks. When I think back about my personal experience of clashes, it brings up all sorts of things, you know, from tantrums as a, as a kid, you know, clashing against my parents, to um, interviewing for quite an elite art school and just feeling like I was never going to fit in there. Um, but I think the thing that probably still means a lot to me are the, the clashes of um, unions sticking up for workers' rights, which I think is becoming, again, more and more important um, as inflation rates are rising all around the world. Um, and the, the wages are not, and there are lots and lots of people struggling, professionals, um, who have full-time jobs and are living on the poverty line. And I, I have been there. I was a full-time, um, qualified secondary school teacher in the UK, and I was absolutely broke. You know, I, I was so, so poor, and I was working 24 hours a day. Um, and so when the ballots went round, I was there and I was on the, the picket line um, and I support all of those people who are having to take that action now because it's not something that people undertake lightly to lose money, um, but it is something that is necessary. Thank you so much, um, Sarah, for being so brave and sharing such a raw and authentic experience for us, um, which I'm very grateful for because by sharing of such experiences, this is how um, we are bonding together as an art, global art community, as well as being able to um, see things from each other's perspective um, and sort of say, well, actually, perhaps I've gone through something similar. Oh, did you also, you know, and... It's, it's, it's brilliant to see this honesty as well, um, and this really authenticness. And um, thank you very much for sharing. Um, Amanda, what are your thoughts? Hey, while I was listening, I was thinking about the example of clashing that I experiencing or recently. And, uh, uh, I, I have to say that all of them are very, in a way, are very, very personal, uh, because I, I am experiencing this, uh, this clash in a little bit everywhere in my life. So at my job place, in my art, also at a personal level in the interaction with my family, with my, uh, with my partner or former partner. It's always this idea of, of, of clashing that in a way, uh, give me the idea of continue going on, a kind of fighting, but at the same time, it's also giving to me many times an idea of being very tired, really, really tired. And uh, I feel that also in this, in this, I felt that I'm living a kind of contradiction because I would like to have, for example, personally, a relief, but I know that with a relief, I will find a little bit of unsatisfaction 
uh, uh, and a little bit be unsatisfied. Uh, so I need this uh, this conflict, this contradiction in me, uh, and and in a way, uh, it, it's sometimes it's very complicated to uh, to uh, to manage. It's very complicated to uh, to manage the the idea of clash uh, for the for the interaction that we can create and for the uh, and also for the concept that we may create in the others. Uh, I, uh, in, in terms of clash, uh, well, recently I'm living a, a very strong clash in my life due to personal reason that I, uh, really, really personal reason. But as I said, also in terms of, uh, of my background, uh, the city where I'm from that is really part of my blood. So if you cut my vein, you will see my city coming out from my, from my vein. Is all uh, is all uh, really based on the idea of 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 clashing. Is really based on that, and uh, and but in a way that at the same time is very ordered and very chaotic. It is clashing everywhere in the traffic. It is clashing in drinking a coffee. There is clashing in everything, and is a little bit the essence that I. That I like, that makes me feel very, very tired, but I know that I cannot do without it. So, absolutely. Sorry for the very confused uh, answer, but I was really thinking about it. <laughs> um, no, thank you for sharing. I think, you know, when we think out loud, um, it, we need kind of time and space to sort of really get into things. And this is essentially where humans, um, I think personally, think sometimes there's a clash between humanity and technology in the sense that, um, as humans, you know, we have our flaws, we have our, our mistakes that we make, we have some brilliant work that humans have done. Whereas with technology, we have, uh, sort of like a standardized, um, you know, a, a, a standardized flawless, um, you know, almost a standardized um, flawless, um, perception of things. So that's really nice to see. Um, we have Molly joining us. Thank you very much for joining us, Molly. If you can please introduce your artistic, uh, background and tell us a little bit about yourself, please. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, my name is Molly Gearing, and I am a visual artist from central Pennsylvania in the United States of America. Um, I work primarily in painting, mixed media, and recently I've begun exploring wall sculpture and fiber arts. Fantastic. Um, Molly, what does the theme clash mean to you personally? Well, for me, when I think of the word clash, I think of two very different things coming together in a way that is really loud and maybe provocative or almost violent in a way. But I also um, realize that there are sometimes some negative connotations to the word clash, like if you're clashing with a person, if they're clashing with um, an ideology, it's sort of a negative. But I also think that there is a positive um, aspect to that, and that clash can be good. Like in art, for instance, I think that um, like the clash of colors and patterns can really make something beautiful. And I think clash is where ideas come together. We, you know, fight against each other, but then ultimately we create something bigger and better from that clash. Um, thank you. That's a, a quite a positive way of, you know, when you're saying you can create something bigger and better, you know, that clash doesn't have to have necessarily a negative connotation from its from its title thank you very much for sharing that how does your artwork that you submitted to the lacuna art festival for theme clash how does that respond to this theme oh well my work uh subtlety is a painting of um flowers on a black and white checkerboard background and um it's a clash of textures it's the very graphic black and white tile look as opposed to some very um, organic shapes and very kind of like loose interpretations of leaves and flowers and the likes. And um, I think there, those 
elements do clash in a lot of ways. You know, you don't really think about, or I don't really think about all the time putting those together. But um, the name of my piece is also Subtlety, which makes you think, oh, this will be something calm, very, you know, low key and very um, celebrating the natural beauty of florals. But uh, this is a clash because my work is very busy and very loud and it kind of uh, it, it yells at you a little bit, I think, which was what my intention was in the beginning. Um, thank you very much um, for sharing. So what inspired you to create this piece of artwork? My main inspiration was uh, my relationship with traditional femininity. I feel like flowers really uh, represent womanhood in the traditional sense of being quiet and delicate and beautiful and, you know, things almost like objects to be looked at. And um, they're they're delicate. And I think that that is a way, like, there are many people who either identify as women or people who, you know, enjoy the feminine aesthetic. And that really works for them that really describes them that represents them but um for me i think that it's only one facet to a very deep and very uh varied experience for women and um i think that flowers can be really aggressive uh, i garden and so they will pop up everywhere and sometimes you know especially with wildflowers they will kind of just take over whole fields almost in this very aggressive violent way and um they're assertive and they're bold with big colors and unignorable shapes. And so I think that clashes with this kind of idea of the soft, delicate vibe of a regular flower. So um, I, I this idea is supposed to represent how like the idea of the delicate, you know, quiet, traditional woman can clash with the idea of how women actually are in that, yes, they can be delicate and they can be calming and wonderful but they also can be loud and you know provocative and uh i think that i wanted to really emphasize the difference between the traditional flower and the and traditional femininity with like a very hyper saturated palette bold patterns so in a way that really uh makes you think about the flower and femininity as it is a construct in a different way Oh, wow, I, I love your term, hypersaturated palette, and I really am looking forward to seeing your artwork at the festival. Um, Thank you. What made, you're welcome. What made you take part in the Lacuna Art Festival? Oh, I got really lucky. Um, one of my dear friends who was participating this year, Brittany Curtin, has, um, she shared about it on social media. And so I saw, and I saw the theme was Clash, and I'm like, oh, like, you know, the band, like, Combat Rock was a great album, but I kid, in all seriousness, I saw this, um, I clicked on a couple things and did some research, and I was really excited to work with, uh, like, a festival that is, seems really artist-centric, and also a, a festival that's really um, international, so that I could, you know, learn about and connect with other artists all across the world and have this kind of theme bring us together. Uh, brilliant. I think you um, hit the nail on the head when you describe the Lakina Art Festival as art, artist-centric, um, you know, and it also has a great deal of public engagement as well. Um, what do you think the future holds for this theme, Clash? Do you think it can be an ongoing theme? And if so, why? Oh, I absolutely think it can be an ongoing theme, and honestly, I think that it should. I think that um, the idea of Clash can keep growing. Um, as everything, you know, there's a lot happening in the world. There are good things and bad things, but there is always clash. There will always be tension and there will always be people working for and against and bringing new ideas together that maybe don't share a lot of things in common. But I think that, um, it will drive a lot of change. And I think that change is good. It's important. It's, uh, what we need as human beings is change and evolution. And so, um, there will always be clashes in art, too. You know, there will always be, like, one group saying, oh, this is good, and another saying, no, this is not good. And there will be visual clashes, aesthetic clashes. And so I think that the idea of clash is really kind of central to, at least to my, to my artistic process, but I think that it's something... ...working with and thinking about how 
these clashes can help us grow. Fantastic. Um, thank you so much, Molly. Um, it's really um, insightful to get your perspective on the world, and we'll continue the conversation. Uh, I can see we've got Odessa on board uh, right now. Thank you so much for joining us, Odessa. If you can please tell us a little bit about your uh, background as an artist and a little bit about your artistic practice, please. I live here in Oregon with my husband and my children. Um, I actually have been an artist my entire life. Um, I started creating art as a child and in, in nature. And uh, I was a very uh, inquisitive child. Um, through a, a great turn of events in my life, you know, it led me um, to enjoy art and appreciate people and um I've always been very inquisitive watching others. And so I grew up in, in just a very creative uh, way. And then in uh, school, you know, of course, all the art classes. But when I was in college, um, I did study painting uh, at Boise State University. And then um, through a series of events, um, uh, actually, it was just raising my family um, that my art practice um, stopped. And then um, in 2013, I opened an art studio in Boise, Idaho, where I'm from. I'm from Idaho. And uh, it was called Artistic Adventures with Odessa. And that was my very first um, art studio. And we would go do um, public art tours around Boise. And I would take children around and introduce them to the public arts. And then we'd have lunch and paint in the in the park. So it was just a lovely experience. Um but just after that, I found out my husband was uh, terminally ill. And so my life changed drastically. And uh, so uh, I spent about three years uh, with him in hospice. And then after, just as he was getting ready to pass, I returned to my art again as a way to um, process through that. And um, so that was six years ago. Um, and after that, you know, when you're grieving, life changes and your perspective changes. Um, I, you know, I've had an opportunity to do some art, but uh, what brought me here to Oregon was actually a, a sand artist, a land artist that I'd followed for a very long time. Uh, his name is Andreas Amador, and he is from San Francisco. And I saw that he was doing a workshop on the beach, uh, it's land art, and it's just beautiful. And I just couldn't even wrap my mind around how he did this. And so I went and I participated in the um, that workshop with him. And then the next day, he invited me uh, to watch him do a commission with a family. And I just thought how lovely and joyful he was and what a beautiful art form this was. And so I went home. And my adult child, uh, heaven, I said, Hey, let's go to the beach. And, um, we stopped and grabbed some rakes. And, uh, two weeks later, I quit my job and I moved to Oregon to be a land artist. So it was quite the turn of events that brought me here. Um, and since then, it's been four years I've been in Oregon. Um, the first time I danced on the sand with my rake, I knew I was home and that this art form was going to change my life and the lives of many other people. And since then, um, it's just been a glorious ride. Um, for Clash uh, this year, I was part of the Lacuna Festivals last year. I was invited by Simon to join for uh, Sand Art. And then this year when I applied, um, my artwork has changed and evolved, of course, as ours do, uh, I think. <laughs> and uh, so I... Uh, I started stone balancing as a way to center myself. Um, and when Clash came up, I just thought, you know, I want to incorporate color and I want to do stones, but in a way that's different. Um, and so I started incorporating vegan food coloring, just all natural food coloring. And, and it was just very playful. Um, the, Three images that I submitted for Clash are actually the very first uh, stone balancing that I did with color, and I called it True Colors. 
Um, and so I, I know that as an artist, I'm evolving and that this is just the start of something really amazing. And so um, I think for the theme of Clash, I think it just speaks to our human nature. Um, I think we clash with nature and that we need to bring awareness back as artists. And um, it's a universal language. It speaks no matter where. And being a part of this World Art Festival, I don't have to speak those languages to communicate to people. Um, and the colors were so truly beautiful, but they really did starkly clash against the landscape. And I think sometimes that we feel like we are improving nature um, by modifying it. And so I'd like to bring awareness to nature, but also our role and what we're here to do as humanity is to protect nature. And um, so I think that artists have a great role in helping to change the global perspective on how we treat the environment. Um, but also it connects us to ourselves. And I think as an artist, the biggest clash I've ever had in my life is with myself. And so this was just a wonderful, beautiful opportunity to share my art and myself with the world in a way that's different than I've done before. And so um, I know it's going to be like a crazy ride coming, um, and I'm really super excited for this festival. So I, I do appreciate being part of it. Um, thank you very much, Odessa, for sharing your journey. Um, I think you've been incredibly brave. Uh, with everything that you've gone through. Um, I'm sorry to hear about um, the difficulties um, and the sorrows that you've gone through, but you've emerged um, in incredibly strong, incredibly tenacious. Um, what inspired you for your artwork that you've submitted for looking at art festivals? Oh, it was my husband. Um, so I lost... Um, my husband art in 2016. And when I came here, I had no, no intentions of ever finding love again. Um, he is my muse. So, um, when I came here, I met this amazing man, Ken Ford. Um, and he has been through this crazy journey for me, uh, with me for the last, um, four years. And, uh, we just were married June 1st on the sand. Um, where I first stepped and, and, uh, put my rake down. Um, and it was a beautiful, glorious event. And I just know that my life with him and my family and my children, um, since we've moved here, it is my family and my children that inspire me daily and my friends and my loved ones. And they're all part of my art and they're all part of me. And I think when we lose somebody, they remain with us. And the way we honor them is by living a big, beautiful life. And I have that here now. I have a new grandbaby. His name is Apollo. And he is like a little cherub. He's so beautiful. And my children have found love again. And that was six years ago. And now, um, you know, it's, we're moving into year seven since that. And, uh, I just feel like there's a light that's going to shine through me and honor people, um, and their loved ones and the people that, and the relationships that we hold dear. Um, I don't believe the art is what's important. I think it's the experience of making it. And this is why. Um, this is why I do what I do. I create these artworks with my family. They're playing and I get to watch them and observe them while I make art and they come and they photograph me and we all do this together. Um, and it's, it's glorious. And I get to do that every single day and honor that. Um, just this last weekend on, uh, Father's Day weekend, um, I got to take my grandbaby to the beach and for the first time, my friends, and it was so fun. Um, we all came together and they helped me create my video for the Lacuna Festivals. Um, and so 
they are my inspiration and they are what motivate me to be a better person and to finally learn to love myself. And I think that's the greatest gift we can give as artists to the world is to share ourselves through our experience. And I know as I'm making it, it's the process of creating it that's so important to me. And what remains is not for me. It's for everyone else to enjoy. And uh, so I, I just, I'm so very lucky and grateful and honored um, that I've been given such a beautiful life. I, you know, six years ago, I was in the darkest hours of my existence. And it was through my art that I became healed. And I want to share that with everyone. Like, thank you for being so brave, um, Adessa, and, you know, uh, and sharing the, the, these, these moments with us. Congratulations on your grandchild. Thank you. And, um, you know, oh. it's, it's a lot that you've been through, um, almost a clash of, um, suffering, but great, um, great miracles through it, you know, of all the good things that have happened now and, you know, of the life. Uh, that, 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 that you're leading and how that translates into art and the human element of, of, of that. So that's very, very inspiring and we're very grateful, uh, you know, that you've shared this with us. Um, and uh, really inspired by your courage, um, uh, and, and your bravery as well. Um, what do you think does the future hold for this theme clash and do you think it can be an ongoing theme? I I think we're living the theme in these times that we're living. Um and I think we're gonna see um humanity clashing in different ways. We see it in Ukraine, we see it all over the world. Um but I think through art and I, I think there's a movement coming. It's a new age where People, because of the pandemic, have been locked away, and it's almost like a. It was almost like a um, a forced spiritual awakening for the world, where we were all forced to be to, uh, to be there and battle our own demons through it. And I think now I just feel a lightness, and that things are going to be different. Um, but I think healing is clashing. Um, and it's ugly and it can be crazy and it can be, um, healing. And as you heal those past traumas and pains in your life, and when you come out the other side and the light is just so beautiful that you can't help to share that joy. So do I think humanity will clash? Absolutely. Not a doubt. Um, but I'm here, uh, to help spread joy and love into the world and that's my purpose and I do that through my art and through my life and through the way I live it and all the many things I do um so yes I do believe those clashes are still going to be there but I hope that my art as it travels all over the world maybe helps to heal some of that in in people's hearts and maybe they can heal from their traumas too um, so that they can see the beauty that's all around them. Um, I've often said that we are not separate from nature. We are nature. And we have been living apart from nature for so long that we don't know how to connect to it. And so I think things like art festivals, um, the uh, belief um, in Llano, Texas last year um, was one of that I participated in. I think through land art and and just bringing people out into nature, you know, with the pandemic, that was the only place we could retreat to, um, especially here. I don't know about all over the world, but in Oregon, um, it's such a beautiful place to be that it was easy um, to get out into nature and, and just connect with that. Um, and so I, I really think that this festival is going to help heal that. Um, and the artwork that people are going to see um, is going to heal many. And I am just one of many, many, many artists. Um, and 
spiritual practitioners and guides and uh, spiritual leaders, um, theologians, educators um, from all over the world are going to come together and we're going to heal the world. And we're going to do it through art and music and dance and laughter. And it's that joy that spreads infectiously because I can tell you the biggest clash in my life has been with being true to myself and who I am. And when you empower others to be their true selves, um, joy is what radiates love, kindness, compassion. Um, and that is what we're all here to do is to spread that light and that joy into the world. Um, thank you very much for your um, perspective of this, Odessa. It's incredibly inspirational um, and moving, um, you know, in, in, in the perspective that you've shared. I'm sure it resonates deep, deeply with many people. I'm very grateful that you've shared your insights. Um, thank you to everybody that uh, has taken part in this. And... Um, really grateful for your insights, for your um, outlook and perspective on this. Uh, in concluding, I'm going to ask Sarah um, if you would just like to um, say a, a parting message in this uh, podcast about the overall theme and about the work that has been submitted by the artists. Um, before I do, Anna, I would like to thank you for organising this podcast. Um, it, all of the festival is directed and led by our artists, and um, I really am grateful that you suggested this and then have run with it, and we are now all here talking about that. Um, it's, it's fantastic. So thank you very much for your time and energy and talent um, and commitment. You must and, welcome. Um, <laughs> and um, in terms of a, a kind of closing statement, um, I would like to say how how much I have actually enjoyed listening to everyone here tonight talking about their individual approach, not only to the artwork that they submitted for the festival, but to their overall practice and also their their life as a whole, their outlook. Um, everybody comes at things from totally different angles um, and it's always really um, inspiring and educational to um, hear, hear all those different viewpoints. Um, it's also actually been quite humbling listening to um, some of the descriptions that you have given to the festivals. Um, Simon and I work really hard to try and make these events um, community-based and engaging and meaningful. And um, it sounds like we are getting at least some of that right. And so I, I really thank you for those comments. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, and actually, for the closing comment, Anna, I think I'm going to pass back to you as the, as the podcaster to, to sign us off. Um, and I will sign off by just saying once again, thank you so much to everyone who's here. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you so much, yeah, no, Sarah. Thank you. thank you so much. I just like really appreciate this. I think, um, you know, we came together to discuss this theme of clash, um, from varying perspectives and we touched upon it from a very, uh, raw, authentic human element. Uh, per personal insights and perspectives as artists, as individuals, um, coming together in, as a global art community, um, you know, through, through that spirit of collaboration, through that spirit of, um, public engagement, uh, that is led by the Lacuna International Art Festival. Um, so in concluding, I would say, um, with this theme of clash where there might be a, a, a literal interpretation of two opposing forces, there's actually a very uh, deep, meaningful, and often a positive 
a perspective to explore from the artist's inner insights and we're looking very much forward to um, exploring that through the artwork in the virtual exhibition um, that will be on display as well as the physical um, upcoming exhibition in the Lacuna Art Festival. Um, thank you very much everybody for taking part in this um, conversation about Clash.